Humanity has succeeded in planting eyes in space, allowing us to watch what is going on outside in real time, even if we can't survive in space for very long. Some of the strange images captured by these cameras every now and then are beyond the comprehension of even the most seasoned astronomers. In this video, we demonstrate how top NASA researchers recently made a remarkable finding in response to a satellite's detection of strange behavior above our planet. What sort of object has NASA detected then? What are scientists' opinions on this? You will get to know this and plenty more as we dive into the details of today's show. However, before getting started with the video officially, here's a quick reminder that you can subscribe for free and like the video so that we can boost the algorithm. Comments are most welcomed. An ISS One of the greatest achievements of humanity is the International Space Station ISS. Although it accomplishes many important tasks, one of its most intriguing features is its camera system. Given the types of things people commonly record, some of them might surprise you. The ISS, the largest spacecraft ever created by humans, required substantial construction. The main structure was completed between 1998 and 2011, although new additions are constantly being built to accommodate new missions and research. It has been inhabited continuously since November 2000. Who then owns the ISS? NASA, the most well-known space agency in the world, does not actually own the International Space Station. Japan, Canada, the United States, Russia, and Europe are all participating in the program. The ISS's maintenance is expensive. The space station costs NASA about $3 billion annually, or one-third of its budget for human space exploration. Russia, which sent 54 people there as opposed to the 158 that the U.S. has sent, is another crucial friend. Without any extra tools, you can actually see the International Space Station ISS, in the night sky due to its brightness. Its visibility is comparable to that of the lovely planet Venus. What precisely is the ISS made up of? The first Russian module houses the equipment necessary to run the station and give the crew a place to live. Nodes or modules are used to connect various station components. Images of the space station show solar arrays that spread out from its sides and utilize solar radiation to produce electricity. The temperature of the space station is controlled by radiators on the truss that join the arrays to the structure. The building was constructed using robotic arms that are outside the space station, but they can also be used to carry people on spacewalks. Science equipment is operated by other arms. Astronauts can perform spacewalks through airlocks that are open to the outside, and pictures of them floating in space are immensely popular since they seem otherworldly. Docking ports allow other spacecraft to dock with the space station. New crews and visitors enter through these ports while robotic spacecraft deliver supplies through the docking port. Russian Soyuz spacecraft transport people to the space station. Even if you haven't thought about it, the ISS affects your daily routine. Due to the station's requirements, some scientific research can only be carried out there, and a sizable portion of that research has resulted in products that we use on Earth every day. As part of the CR-3 mission, SpaceX launched four external cameras, which are now stationed on the ISS. The ISS's Columbus lab is fixed with these HDEV or High Definition Video Cameras. The four cameras are collectively referred to as Columbus's Eye. A live streaming service is operated by the University of Bonn in Germany. The University and the German Space Agency work together to introduce the Columbus Eye program. Even though NASA gave COTS or Commercial Off-the-Shelf Cameras an official sounding acronym, they essentially record live feeds like all other cameras do. Two cameras are either facing backwards or forwards, one is gazing downward, and one is facing forward. They link through an Ethernet cable to the computer on board the International Space Station before beaming back to Earth. You can count on NASA to run an experiment using any tool scientists employ to gauge how quickly image quality degrades due to cosmic radiation exposure. Scientists measure the housing's strength as well as the housing's resistance to space radiation. The cameras are protected in a pressurized, temperature-controlled box. An evaluation of how they are holding up may inform the engineer's choice of the best types of cameras to use on upcoming missions. The broadcasts from these cameras are closely followed by many individuals, particularly the amateur astronomers, because they are incredibly fascinating. But on rare occasions, the cameras catch something exciting. And on rare occasions, someone reports seeing something that suspiciously resembles a UFO or an unidentified flying object. When things get exciting, NASA frequently switches from live content to previously recorded material, confusing viewers and raising the suspicion that the space agency is withholding information from the general public. But what exactly is NASA hiding from us? Strange Company 
Astronomers are still fascinated by one of the sky's great shaggy dog mysteries that would describe the peculiar alien invader, Oumuamua, which sped through the solar system in 2017. Comment from another star, Space Iceberg, Alien Wreck in Space? Two astronomers from Arizona State University, Alan Jackson and Stephen Desch, offered the most solid explanation yet. Oumuamua was a chip off a faraway planet belonging to another star. Long ago, a collision with an asteroid broke it off and sent it careering through space. This research is exciting in that we've probably resolved the mystery of what a Muamua is, and we can reasonably identify it as a chunk of an exopluto, a Pluto-like planet in another solar system, Dr. Desch said in a statement released by the American Geophysical Union. Until now, we've had no way to know if other solar systems have Pluto-like planets, but now we have seen a chunk of one pass by Earth. They announced the results at a meeting of the 52nd Lunar and Planetary Science Conference on March 17th and in a pair of papers around the Journal of Geophysical Research, Planets. The operative words are probably resolved. Although astronomers agree that the new model could answer some questions about the mystery flyby, many more remain in motion. What makes Oumuamua both interesting and frustrating is that none of the theories are slam dunk, said Gregory Lachlan, an astronomer at Yale who has studied Oumuamua. Astronomers in Hawaii patrolling for killer asteroids and other flashes in the night with the Pan Stars 1 telescope in Maui first spotted this mystery object speeding away from the sun at 50 miles per second on October 19, 2017. They called it Amuamua, Hawaiian for scout or messenger, but what was the message? The object's trajectory suggested that it had left the solar system and was headed for outer space after making a quick pass through our solar system's inner planets. It had already passed Earth when it was discovered. The changes in its brightness led astronomers to the conclusion that it was tumbling objects that was no longer than it was wide. Because comets which reside in far-off clouds and are easily detached from their home stars could be the first interstellar visitor to our area, astronomers have long hypothesized that an orphan comet could be the cause. Amuamua was initially thought to be a straying asteroid since it lacked a tail and the gaseous cloud that forms around a comet nucleus. The idea of a reddish cigar-shaped rock was popularized by an artist. Some astronomers have proposed that it might have a pancake-like shape. However, Amuamua accelerated as it left the solar system. Comets frequently behave in this manner because the jets of evaporating gas on their surfaces give them a boost. Maybe it was a comet after all. Although a strange one, the products of Drs. Jackson and Desch are illustrated to resemble a cracker or perhaps a flying cow chip. With the discovery of 21 Borisov in 2018, another extrastellar trespasser that behaved more like a typical comet, the mystery was further complicated. The literature was replete with theories and models. Avi Loeb, an astronomer at Harvard, rode onto the bestseller list earlier this year with the book Extraterrestrial, the first sign of intelligent life beyond Earth, arguing that Oumuamua was an alien space vessel of some kind, and scolding the astronomical community for not thinking more outside the box about extraterrestrial life. The object's imputed shape, he said, could be perfectly consistent with that of a light sail of the type that Dr. Loeb and his colleagues in an ambitious project called Breakthrough Starshot hoped to send to Alpha Centauri sometime this century. But an international team of comet experts riding in Nature Astronomy in 2019 under the name of the Amuamua ISSI team concluded that all the data were consistent with a purely natural origin for Amuamua. Last year, Dr. Lachlan of Yale and his student Daryl Seligman, now at the University of Chicago, suggested that Amuamua was a primordial iceberg of hydrogen that had formed in the dark, cold center of a molecular cloud, one of the vast assemblages of primordial gas that gave rise to stars. The problem was that it was hard to explain how the hydrogen, which freezes at a temperature around 3 degrees Kelvin, barely above absolute zero, would stay frozen on the long trip from its birth to here. Inspired by the hydrogen ice idea, Dr. Jackson and Dr. Desch investigated other kinds of icebergs that might fill the bill. They finally hit on nitrogen. We've never seen any examples of hydrogen ice in nature, Dr. Desch said in an email. But when the New Horizon spacecraft went past the previously unexplored Pluto in 2015, it found a world awash in nitrogen glaciers. Amuamua was small, about half as long as a city block and only as thick as a three-story building. But it was very shiny, they wrote in one of their papers. The shininess is about the same with the surfaces of Pluto and Triton, which are also covered in nitrogen ice. Triton is the moon of Neptune. According to Dr. Desch and Jackson's preferred theory, the young Amuamua was thrown from a Pluto-like object that was orbiting a distant star about a half billion years ago. It would have been roughly rounded at first, 
but cosmic rays hacked away as it had moved through space. They estimated that they had lost half of its original mass by the time it entered our solar system in 1995 or thereabouts. Like a bar of soap in the shower, it probably melted to a sliver throughout its orbit around the sun, according to the experts. By the time it departed the solar system, just 10% would have remained due to the rocket-like impact of nitrogen evaporation. Nitrogen sublimates at about 25 degrees Kelvin, Dr. Desch said. We calculate the Amuamua reach temperature in the 45 to 50 K range while it rounded the sun, so it was sublimating nitrogen gas like crazy, hence the strong mass loss. He and Dr. Jackson concluded in their paper, a key advantage of the proposal we advance here of a nitrogen ice fragment is that it can simultaneously explain all of the important observational characteristics of Amuamua, and that material of this composition is found in the solar system. We therefore conclude that Amuamua is an example of an uncommon, but certainly not exotic object, a fragment of a differentiated Pluto-like planet from another stellar system. Of course, that's not the end of the story. In an email, Dr. Lobick complained that other things, like if Wamwamwa had made of nitrogen, it should also contain carbon, which was not detected by the Spitzer Space Telescope, because both nitrogen and carbon are produced together by a thermonuclear carbon-nitrogen-oxygen cycle-rich carbon-nitrogen-oxygen cycle in stars. Dr. Desch responded in an email, spoken like a cosmologist. He went on to note that planets have ways of sifting and separating the elements they were born with. Otherwise, Earth's atmosphere, which is 79% nitrogen, should be several percent carbon instead of one-tenth of one percent carbon. Or, as another astronomer pointed out, the Great Lakes would be all full of sparkling water. Dr. Desch noted, moreover, that the reddish color of Amuamua is an exact match to the redness of the ice on Pluto, which is 0.1% carbon in the form of methane. Another issue is statistics. How is it that these cosmic icebergs are so common? More than 50 trillion per cubic light year space, according to a calculation by Dr. Lachlan, that the Pan-STARRS project would have discovered one after just five years of searching? That puts a lot of pressure on the galaxy to manufacture exoplutos, Dr. Lachlan said. If so, Amuamua was just the tip of an unsuspected iceberg, so to speak, which is exactly what Dr. Desch and Dr. Jackson contend. A lot of things get ejected from planetary systems, Dr. Desch pointed out. All papers assumed that these would be as big as comets, and so predicted them in much lower numbers. But if they are smaller, Dr. Desch added, there would be many more fragments flying out. So something like Amuamua would not necessarily be an anomaly. So far we've seen one and two ice fragment and one comet among the interstellar objects, he wrote in an email. Small number statistics don't get much smaller than that. Those numbers were about what was expected according to their calculations, he said. Maybe we got a little lucky to see one so quickly. But it's not a fluke or anything. This is a common object entering our solar system. If more are out there to be seen, they should soon be detectable by the Vera Rubin Observatory, a giant telescope in Chile, that will start stalking the sky later this decade. Other astronomers have suggested a different creation mechanics, in which a distant planet passing close to its star is torn apart by tidal forces. This would result in fragments even more oblong, closer in resemblance to a cigar than a cookie casting doubt on the nitrogen ice theory, Dr. Lachlan said. That is a controversy that could be resolved by better images, if and when the next interstellar interloper comes by. But as Dr. Lachlan said, nature might have the last laugh. Given the rule of thumb that 99% of one's own cool ideas tend to not work out, he said, I think the smart money is on another object with Amuamua's characteristic weirdness never again being observed. So what do you think of this otherworldly elongated extraterrestrial visitor? Do let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up. It will help us to understand our audience and allows YouTube to suggest similar videos to you. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you at the next one.